most of us have too much to do and not enough time to do it in. We feel stressed, overworked, and overloaded. And thanks to new technology and media, we have more coming at us than ever before. Until a few decades ago, we were predominantly an industrial economy. In that era, your work was clearly defined for most people. If you were a farmer, for example, you had fields to plow, cows to milk, and equipment to fix. The work was hard, but most of the tasks were generally straightforward and self-evident. You could look at them and actually see the fence that you have to paint and actually see the cows that you have to milk. With the shift to a knowledge economy, the nature of work has changed. Unlike in the industrial era, where tasks were generally evident to us, the essence of knowledge work is that you not only have to do the work, but you also have to define what the work is. For example, if you are painting your house, which is a form of manual labor, you can see right away where to brush next. But when you get 100 emails a day, a form of knowledge work, most of which do a pretty poor job of getting to the point, you have to figure out what to do with each email. Most of us haven't paid sufficient attention to the skill of defining our work with clarity. This is why it so often feels like our work days never stop. When you don't have your work clearly defined, there can never be any finish point. Knowledge work is about creating and utilizing knowledge, but it is more than that. For when your work consists in creating and using knowledge, there is an important consequence by definition, and it is this. It must be primarily self-directed. Peter Drucker points this out so well. He says, the knowledge worker cannot be supervised closely or in detail. He can only be helped, but he or she must direct themselves and must direct themselves towards performance and contribution, that is, effectiveness. This need to direct ourselves is often overlooked. We are not taught how to do it. Perhaps this is because some people think that knowing how to get things done is obvious, that it just comes naturally to people. Peter Drucker, perhaps the greatest management thinker of the 20th century who had a 50-year career. Peter Drucker pointed out that in all of his time, working with the best leaders in every field, he never found a natural, that is, someone who was instinctively effective. Instead, every effective person that he encountered had to work at becoming effective. Brilliant insight, hard work, and good intentions are not enough. Effectiveness is a distinct skill that must be learned. Some people are more inclined to it than others, and everyone is naturally built to be capable of effectiveness, but effectiveness is something we learn like reading. Peter Drucker says it well, to be reasonably effective, it is not enough for the individual to be intelligent, to work hard, or to be knowledgeable. Effectiveness is something separate, something different. In other words, there are actually two components to doing our work. There are the job skills themselves, and then there is the process of how to do work in general. We've done pretty well as a society at teaching how to do the content of our jobs, but we haven't been so great at teaching the overarching process of how to do our work, how to keep track of what we have to do, make decisions about what's best to do next, how to keep from overcommitting ourselves, and how to do this in the midst of 75 emails a day, 12 phone calls, and 18 interruptions. In past eras, this wouldn't have been such a big deal, but today it is because of the rise of knowledge work and the consequent ambiguity coupled with the overload that comes from mass connectivity. Even though effectiveness is something that must be learned, Peter Drucker found 
that everyone who did work at becoming effective succeeded. And that's what other leading thinkers on productivity, such as Scott Belsky, found as well. If we are going to learn effectiveness, we need to do it right. Many people make a wrong turn here, however. That's why in the next session, we're going to learn what the answer is not.